one. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees. Today is May the 14th, uh, 2019, and it's about 5.30. And um, Mr. Burning, I'd like you please to begin, begin with the roll call for us, please. Yes, Mr. Burning. Present. Mr. Harnelaw. Present. Ms. McFarland. Present. All the trustees are present. Okay, then uh, our chief, would you mind giving, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On our agenda t this evening, you know, the first part is a public hearing, and it's regarding, uh, it's actually, it's the second hearing regarding the revision of the township's property maintenance code. Um, and actually, it's uh, addressing the updates to that Springfield Township property maintenance code as well. And Ms. Kennedy, Ms. Kennedy I'd like to ask you to uh, describe the proposed update, please. Just for the record, um, these two public hearings were advertised in the Northwest Community Press on March 20th and May 1st, just letting the public know of these public hearing dates. Um, as far as the updates to the code are concerned, there are really uh, not a, a lot of updates to the code, kind of as we discussed at the last meeting. Most of them are administrative updates to the code, just little things that have changed since the adoption back in 2004. Um, really, the, the impetus for going through this update was changing the process by which we enforce the property maintenance code. So, as we discussed last time, currently the property maintenance code um, outlines enforcement through the civil citation process. And in order to make the enforcement more uh, in line with how we currently enforce the zoning code for the township, we'd like to update the process to also go through housing board like the zoning code does. Um, so, like I said, really the largest change to the code, there aren't any changes to um, to any of the violations or anything like that. It's really just how the code is enforced. So, it'll be going from civil citation process through um, the county housing board. Those are really the the crux of the changes. I haven't received any feedback from anyone either in favor or against uh, this change. Actually, I think in passing, just conversation, explaining it to some people, they are positive, you know, they're positive with the changes. Um, hopeful that this will bring some problem properties into compliance with the code. So I, I guess to fix what I just said, we have received positive feedback. Um, otherwise, unless Ms. Abrams has anything to add, that's really... Well, do you know? I think and a bunch of legalese. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. And it should the also... The importance is the legalese. Right, exactly. So it should help improve the process and for everyone. That's correct. I, mean, I think it'll just be consistent. I mean, as we stated at the last public hearing, the township likes to make processes consistent across the board, and, and this update will really make it consistent with how we're currently enforcing the zoning code. So it's it's less confusing for staff who need to enforce the code, but then also residents and um, the county. You know, when people receive a citation or a notice that they're in violation of either the property maintenance code or the zoning code, we're just consistent across the board. Thank you. So that's the summary of, of the updates. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like uh, to have any comments or questions about the uh, Springfield Township Property Maintenance Code? If so, I'm just asking you to come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Okay. Do you all have any questions? I do not. I do not. No, I'm fine with it. If the records can reflect that we had uh, no questions from our trustees, our fellow trustees, nor anyone from the audience. Um, if there be no further meeting or no further business, 
Regarding our public meeting, I would like to uh, entertain a motion to adjourn out of the public hearing so we can go into our regular trustee meeting. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're out of the meeting. All right. Um, everyone should have re uh, we we have approval of minutes. We had a regular session on April the 9th, 2019. And then we had a regular work session on April the 23rd, 2019. Need a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Great. Moving on with our agenda, Mr. Burning, our fiscal officer. Um, yes. You have the financial report, please. Yes, Ms. McFarland. For the month ending April 30th, 2019, the township expenditures were $1,717,893.10, and receipts were $1,902,571.60. The ending cash balance of $20,671,497.41 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvement projects and investments. What I do request is a motion to approve receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, updated and current revenue and reports for the period ending April 30th, 2019. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And I just want everyone to know that financial reports are available for viewing at the administration offices weekdays during regular business hours or on our website 24-7. Thank you, Ms. McFarland. Thank you, Mr. Burning, for that splendid report as always. He's always keeping us up to date on where we are financially. Yeah, so thanks we... to Kim for helping me out. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Gilbert, do you have a report for us, please? I do. Thank you, Mr. McFarland. The first action item that I have this evening is a liquor permit hearing request for 6244 Daily Road. I think this is the quick and cold or something of that nature on Daily Road, correct? Right across Road. Drive through, yes, correct. Are there any objections? No objections. Okay. It's a change in stock of the ownership of the company, so Got it. it doesn't really affect the permit. So with that, I would just entertain a motion to send the requisite paperwork to the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next action item I have is, as the board is aware, over the past year or two, we've been moving through with Ms. Abrams and updating all of our position descriptions in the township, which I'm not sure how many there are, but there's a lot. There are many. And as a result, we finally have gotten to the end of the road of that process. And the updates were, were primarily to some housekeeping issues, also to ensure that we're in compliance with a lot of the FLSA requirements and different things. So we think we're in a position now where we can move forward with adopting those. What I would ask is uh, from the board, if you're so inclined, is a motion to approve those position descriptions with final pending legal review uh, by our law director. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. I don't know if you want to comment on that at all. Uh, I think you stated it appropriately. The main reason is to make sure they're consistent, to make sure that we sufficiently outline the essential functions uh, so that we're in compliance with the ADA, FLSA. Well, just minor tweaks. I think they were pretty good, but we also need to evaluate on a pretty, pretty regular basis exactly what the functions are of each job so that we can adequately describe them in the position description. So it was just looking at it again and cleaning them up. So I think it's, it was a long process and uh, we're, we're come to the end, basically. And I just thought about this. I have a question. Do we have a system in which we, let's say, annually or every two years or something, go through our job descriptions and revise them and re review them and, if necessary, revise them? That's kind of what this was. This was the, the first initiation of really going through them all. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done them by department in the past. Mm -hmm. So this was just global. We also wanted to make them more uniform. So they're now standard template, very uniform. And yes, going forward, it will be easier to analyze it each time. Uh, they were a little, uh, a department head would create the new one when they had a new job, which wasn't necessarily consistent with how the template we had. So now they're all the same and uh, it'll be easier to enforce that going forward. Great, thank you. The, the next item I have is, as the board may be aware, we had the first rendition of the Finneytown Farmers Market here on our property this past Sunday, Mother's Day. Unfortunately, it was a, a dampened start to that um, 
of it. However, the the township it was necessary for the township to enter into an agreement with the organizer of that event so that we can provide them the, the space in order to do that and obviously hold us harmless and um, absolve us from any liability relative to the event. So we we have an agreement with them. What I'm asking for is for the board to ratify uh, my entering into that agreement with the uh, Finneytown Farmers Market uh, organizer, uh, Jenny Arulo? Revelo. So with that, unless the board has any questions, I would just ask for a ratification of my entering into that agreement with the Finneytown Farmers Market. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I did drive through Sunday and it was a little sparse course. It was a little chilly and a little sprinkly out, but uh, I think once the weather turns, it should be a lot better. Since Kim's not technically in charge of it, probably we'll have some fair weather. <laughs> <laughs> she can bring rain. Yes, she can. The next item I have following with uh, agreements is, as the board is aware, we've been working fairly closely with the uh, trustees of the Crutchfield Park uh, Trust. As the board is aware, we have a, a, a park in the West College Hill neighborhood that the township doesn't own, however, we maintain and operate as a public park through a lease agreement with the trustees of that particular piece of property. Since we initially entered into the, the most recent agreement 10 years ago, some assessments have accumulated on the property and I think there was some confusion as to who was responsible for paying those assessments. And subsequently, the property has got into a position where it's in fear of being foreclosed on by the county auditor. We've intervened, obviously stopped that process. The amount of assessments is roughly 4,000-ish dollars, I think. So the, the agreement that we have before you tonight is to amend the current agreement, allowing the township to pay the back assessments and pay the assessments going forward, which roughly are $300 a year. Obviously, the trustees of the park don't have the financial, the financial wherewithal to pay those assessments. And because the township operates a public park on the property, we felt like it was, it was our responsibility to make sure that that property stays in compliance with and current with the, the assessment costs. So as a result, this particular agreement gives us now the legal authority to pay those assessments because the previous one did not, which is part of the reasons why those assessments accumulated to the point they were. And in return for that, the agreement also allows us exclusive access to operate a park on that piece of property for the next 25 years. So 2045. 2045. Yeah. And actually, there's an automatic 25-year renewal after that. Right. 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 Yes. Right. I, I read the agreement. Uh, Laura's good job. I, I appreciate how you covered everything. and. And, uh, you know, our hands as a township are not tied in the, you know, management and use of the property. And that, that was basically the agreement we had when we signed it initially. Um, we've tweaked a few things, looking at it, being able to look at it again. Obviously, we had to have some consideration for agreeing to pay them for something that we didn't pay previously. And, and we've done that with accelerating the term. So we're, we were not entitled to the 25-year term to start now. We are now, so so it's a longer term. Assuming we want to keep it, we have options to you know terminate the lease if, if circumstances change. Uh, but I think it, it's a win-win for both. The community cannot afford to, to run that park. They just the trustees are just well-intentioned individuals. There's just not the finances to run the park. So it uh, it makes a lot of sense for the township to do so, especially in light of. Uh, and I think it's it's probably. It's obvious, but it's a no-cost lease to us. Right. So it's not right. like we're paying right. a lease amount to, to for that piece of property. So just the assessment. I think the f yeah, right. The few hundred dollars a year for the assessments, I think, is is you know, other than maintenance, is, is our expense. which we're doing anyway. Which we're doing anyway. So and, and I'd just like to add as well that uh, we did meet with the community. We've already said that, and they they were very very open and wanting us to do whatever we could to, to preserve the integrity of the park and keep the park 
uh, not have to worry about um, getting these assessments or any, any dollars that they would have to pay out or, or even have to worry about risking the loss of possibility of that park. So it was, it was a, we met with the, the, the community and we listened to their, their concerns and their issues and we addressed almost every question that they had in a, time of, you know, in a timely manner. And it was mutually agreed upon that we would, we would move forward with this. So I just, you know, I want to thank this, everyone that was there at that meeting for, you know, we took the time out and it was a good group of people, the room was full. And it's a, it, it, it becomes a win-win, not only for the community, but for uh, the township as a whole. Well, I just would like to say, just so it's, no one's confused, I have not forwarded this to the trustees yet mm -hmm. of the Crutchfield Park, because I couldn't really do that until you all had approved the terms. I couldn't send it to them and say you'd agreed until you had agreed. So once this is in line with what we discussed, there's nothing different or new than what we discussed with them. So I don't anticipate any issue, but just so the record's clear, once you approve the contract, I will send the lease. I'll send it to them for their approval. And we made them aware of the process as well. So they, they're aware that it has to come to us for discussion and deliberation, and then we make the decision. Okay. With that, is, is, do we have a motion to authorize me to enter into the, the agreement with the Crutchfield Park trustees? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. The last action I might have is uh, a piece of property on Wilson Avenue, which is, if the board is aware, is just uh, west of Hamilton Avenue. There's actually two parcels that are have been forfeited uh, through the county foreclosure process. And as statute requires, the county has asked the township if we have any interest in acquiring those properties. Typically in these situations, we approach a neighboring property owner to see if they have an interest in the property to get it back to a productive uh, use. Fortunately for us, uh, this foreclosed piece of property is just west of an existing daycare business. The daycare owner hasn't expressed an it, has expressed interest in the property. So this particular petition would allow us to acquire the property through the forfeited process by the county prosecutor. Then we would turn around and transfer the property to that neighboring property owner getting a, an otherwise nuisance property off our list back into a productive use uh, for an existing business. So unless the board has, had any, has any questions regarding that, I would entertain a motion to uh, authorize staff to initiate and complete the petition process to obtain the Wilson Avenue property as proposed. So moved. Before Second. we do that, yes. let, me, let me clarify. This yep. is going to also go to the CIC. So this right. is That's where right. the, because we have, as the board is well aware, we've, designated the CIC as our agent for rehabbing these types of properties. So um, the petition we file will include that that is going to the CIC when it's transferred. So just to make sure right. the board is aware. Thank you, Mark. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Under discussion items, we have the personnel update. We had the uh, retirement of our longtime receptionist secretary, uh, Cindy Thuman, on April 12th of 2019. I think she was with us for a little over 10 years. So we, uh, we will miss her. She was an integral part of our administration. And she was looking forward to uh, not having to get up in the mornings and come through any bad weather? I think she, I think she timed it just right before the grass started growing. She yes, had to start dealing with nuisance and payment. So. Absolutely. In the fire department, we had a new hire of Tyler uh, Abatiliello. I'm going to butcher that name. You did very well. He is uh, being hired as a part-time medic firefighter. The date of hire is April 8th, 2019. In the public works department, we had several new hires for seasonal laborers, uh, summer help. First one is Robert Ward, April 15th, 2019. Connor O'Brien, May 6th of 19. And Dallas Schaefer, May 6th of 19. That is all I have from a personal update. And I'll now turn it over to Kim for community events and programs. Thank you. I have two events to announce. On Friday, June 7th, we have our annual Puppets for Lunch event. That's where families bring a picnic lunch and um, enjoy a puppet show on the lawn. Afterwards, we have crafts and activities for the kids. That is $2 a person, or I'm sorry, $2 per child. Um, and then on Friday, June 21st, we have our touch a truck event from 11 to one. And that normally attracts over a thousand people. 
Um, we bring in about 50 different vehicles for people to, kids to climb aboard, honk the horns, and take lots of pictures. And the number one attraction is I'm the sorry. helicopter. Yes, the helicopter landing will be at 11:45. You know, it's it's sometimes it's difficult for me to to determine which one is the most exciting. And invariably, I think the truck is really very exciting. Everybody's getting on up, climbing up on them, and tooting a horn and everything. But then when it's announced that the helicopter is on its way, everything ceases, you know, and everybody just waits for that helicopter to land. It's almost like a giant Easter egg at an Easter egg hunt, and all the kids yeah. just run. It is <laughs> one big helicopter. Yes, it is. Are uh, Chiefs scheduled to dance at any particular time? I'm working on that. <laughs> just one. I, unfortunately, Chief Liner isn't here to defend himself. He, <laughs> he had to, what's the saying? He had to see a man about a horse. So, literally, he is, uh, our crew are out trying to get a horse out of a ditch. So. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And the rider. And the rider. So, oh, my goodness. Really, they're busy. That concludes um, my report. Uh, the board has copies of the departmental activity report, so unless you have questions of those, uh, that concludes our report. Thank you. Um, yes. Before we get into the resolutions, uh, Chris, mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, you and I had a discussion on these dangerous property conditions. Did we ever have an opportunity to check with the land bank yet to see if there's any uh, NIP money or other funds available to help with the demolition? I, I, we did, Joe, and, and unfortunately the funding isn't there uh, for these particular properties. In addition, the fact that we the, the land bank would have to own these properties first before they could even, legally could even expend the funds. Okay. Um, so these particular properties are in a pretty deplorable state um, and, and posing a serious risk to the neighborhood. And you know, in discussing this with uh, Mike, he had indicated that they, they really need to come down sooner than later. And waiting 12 to 18 months for the land bank to acquire them with the hope that they would potentially have funding even when they did to demolish the structures probably isn't in the best interest of no i agree i agree with that i just wondered yeah if, uh, we had talked about it yeah and, and in the in years past they had some funding where they could potentially allow us to demolish properties and not have to go through the foreclosure process and own right unfortunately the funds the limited funds that they even have now require them to actually own the property before they can actually demolish the structure so okay. well, we may want to try to look ahead on some other properties yes. to try to move them through them if we can before yeah. in the next year for sure their next fiscal year right and and just because we're declaring them dangerous tonight we will continue to work with the port and if some funding becomes available to allow us to do that in a more expeditious manner we'll still be able to do it this action tonight wouldn't preclude that okay. sounds good okay thank you now we're going to move on to our resolutions, and the first resolution is resolution number 41, 2019, declaring a dangerous property condition at 2125 McKinley Avenue. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burning. Aye. Mr. Honolulu. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. The next resolution is number 42, 2019, declaring a dangerous property condition at 6282 Weatherby Avenue. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Honolulu. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. The next resolution is number 43, 2019, declaring a dangerous property condition at 6322 Betts Avenue. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Honolulu. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. One thing I will add before we move on to the, the next resolutions is that as a result of this action the board would uh, now at some point uh, it would necessitate us to schedule a public hearing for these properties for all three uh, of them for all three of them so what I would ask is if the board would uh, entertain a motion to set the public hearing date for the various listed dangerous properties that were just declared dangerous for June 11th at 5 p.m. June. Which would be our next regular meeting. Next regular meeting. Mm -hmm. That should I that should be, I can work. That's no problem for me. I'm good. Okay. 
Can we have a I motion am, to that effect? I if am as well. That's good. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. And with this public hearing, you know, that's always been a question by, you know, the residents in any area, um, but particularly in West College Hill, we'll send notification out to them? No? Well, we, 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 we send notification to the owners of the properties, to right. the lien holders of the properties, but not the neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Because then, remember, this, these, this hearing is only for the owners of the property to, right. to provide evidence why we should not demolish these structures. Okay. And these structures, I'm sure, all have some profound structural damages and are really deemed to be unsafe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. The next resolution is uh, resolution number 44, 2019, authorizing the private sale of junk motor vehicles which were titled to the township pursuant to <coughs> revised code 4513.61 and revised code 4513.62 and which are not needed or unfit for use in any of our township departments. So, Need a motion. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Hanelaw. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. The next resolution is number 45, 2019, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87 at various listed uh, properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Need a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Harlow. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. The next resolution is number 46, 2019, establishing assessment for abatement of nuisance and certifying same to the Hamilton County Auditor. Need a motion? So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Hanelaw. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. The resolution carries. The final resolution is 47 2019, declaring motor vehicles located on public or private property in Springfield Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, to be junk motor vehicles pursuant to revised code 505.173 and ordering the removal of such vehicles pursuant to resolution number 80-2012 and revised code 505.871. So moved. Seconded. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Hanlaw. Aye. Ms. McFarland. Aye. Resolution carries. Okay. We got through those. That was, we didn't, you know, what I was interested, it's amazing we didn't seem to have a lot of nuisances in relationship to all the grass and stuff. Oh yeah, we did. Like, was that back on uh, three pages of three pages? No, I okay, think it was three pages. I think it's about a record. Oh my goodness! Now most I've ever seen. Dan should be thanking his lucky stars that we don't do all those. <laughs> oh, that's right. One at a time. I One at a time. <laughs> We'd be here a little longer. Yes, we would. This is my gift to the clerk going forward from whatever year we do. Yeah, that, there was, there was a, a lot of conversations Laura and I had about they that. Were. That was a long time ago. Uh, yeah. We got through it though. Next on our agenda is old business. Any, I, I anyone have any old business before the board? I no. don't have any this evening. Okay. I have none. New business. None. Um, I, really none this evening. Okay. I just have one thing that's new. Um, I was uh, in a meeting with our realtors board recently, and they are, you know, how we as township trustees are always looking and honoring and wanting uh, home ownership, you know, in our township. So there is a Senate bill, I think it's 136, that's right now in the Senate that's pending. And it's, it's, a, it's a bill that will help uh, individuals purchase their first homes. And the way they, they're working out the, the situation is that an individual who is considering or contemplating on purchasing a home they can put aside a certain amount of dollars into a particular bank or banking institution. And then when, it, when they identify or see a home that's there, this money can then be used to help with closing costs on the, on the home that they're looking at, as well as any other, and a down payment as well. So for a single first time home, homeowner, they could save up to $5,000 and this would help. Uh, and it's a bipartisan bill as well, so it should, you know, and I'm thinking about our, you know, our new development like out in Pleasant. Well, would that be tax, non-tax money you can put in there? That's what I'm understanding. 
And, and then if, if you're a first time and you're a couple, you could save up to $10,000. Now, you know, Chris said something when I was sharing with him about this uh, particular bill. And you, what was it? You said hopefully there's something in there that would help with the... Uh, well, my, my comment was that if you really want to encourage people to be able to become homeowners, one of the deterrents right now, especially for those individuals that don't have enough for the typical down payment, is the fact that if they have less than 20% down payment in general, they're going to be required to pay PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, which could be anywhere from 150 to usually $300 per month. So that's a huge deterrent in my mind to have people to become homeowners if they don't have enough for a down payment. So mm -hmm. if the legislator really wanted to do something beyond saving $5,000 or $10,000 is to lessen the restrictions and requirements for private mortgage insurance. And that was something uh, that I did share with the, you know, the realtors, and they're looking at the two sponsors, the two individuals that are sponsoring that, to see, you know, whatever we can do to enhance home ownership. You know, that's what we'd like in, in every community, not right. just Springfield Township. And and one of the reasons that it's something that they're really interested in looking at, because so many times first-time homeowners still may have outstanding uh, school debts college debts and they just can't seem to see the way to purchase their home for the first time and this is kind of a way and an opportunity for them to do it and it's a way it appears uh, that has a very little liability to it so uh, Mark Mark from the Realtors Board just would like to give us more information give us an update at the next meeting so we can discuss you know if we'd like him to come here or not and also um, we can just I guess just get a better clarification but I think it sounds like a wonderful opportunity I didn't have anything like that when I was trying to come out of debt from all the college deals that I had. You know, I was on my own with that. Okay. Now comes the time in our meeting where we uh, open the meeting up for citizens' participation. <clears throat> and uh, as I always say, that uh, anyone that's interested in coming to speak with us, they, we need them to address, come to the podium and share with us their name, their address, where they live, and what the questions are. And since we have one person in the audience, you know, we, I don't have to say if there's anyone in the audience that's talking, uh, we would like them to abstain from any discussion so we can hear what the individual is saying. So uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to approach the podium and address the trustees in any manner? Nope, shaking his head no. Seeing none. Uh, then, uh, seeing that there are no other business for us this evening. And, you know, we, we're very, you know, we're expediting this process, but it's only because it's the quiet before the storm. You know, I, I have a feeling that it's not always going to be this smooth. And when? Sure. when? Now you're talking about when? the snow don't, again. Don't say it. Don't, don't say it. Don't, don't change, change it. it. You're bringing up the snow again. Oh, I no. Didn't, I didn't say that word. <laughs> so, again, i just like to thank everyone. I'd like to thank uh, all of the township Staff is doing a great job with all the activities that are coming up. I'm looking so forward to that. And my fellow trustees are out there, you know, staying involved in meetings as well. So, and the police, and you guys are just doing a fantastic job. So, uh, hearing none, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>